Let's talk supply chain. So welcome to the show, Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Great, great having me, and I really appreciate it. I am so excited to have you here. I have been wanting Brian and Seco Logistics <laughs> on this show to do a deeper dive into everything that you do for so long. We see each other at all sorts of conferences yep. throughout the year. I love seeing you because I think you bring so much amazing energy and insights into the industry. And yeah, you just make you know the industry so much more fun and valuable. And so I'm glad that you're here. Sarah, thank you again for having me. Uh, it is it's great to be here at Home Delivery World. Uh, great to finally be on your show yeah. officially, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, we love what you're doing with, with media and helping to get the word out in new and creative ways and in medium that ultimately people like to download and share and read yeah. and view. So, you know, thank you again. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about your journey. I mean, you're the chief growth officer at yeah. Seagull Logistics. Yeah. You know six languages. So first yeah. of all, tell us all about those six <laughs> languages and talk to us about your journey in supply chain because you've been in the industry for quite some time. Uh, absolutely. I, I started with Seco in 2005. Uh, so I've been in the industry now for 17 years. Uh, I've spent most of that time with Seco Logistics and it has been a great uh, growth journey. Uh, it's been incredible. Uh, we are now in 40 plus countries. Um, in 2020, we hit a billion dollars almost. Wow. Uh, but 2021, we hit two billion. So we doubled in size, like wow. a lot of logistics companies. Um, you know, so the struggle has been about capacity, trying to catch up, trying to keep up with all of our clients' needs in this challenging time. Knowing the languages helps, uh, so we are a global company. A lot of our executives, in fact, are multilingual. Our president and CEO uh, is native in both uh, uh, Mandarin and Shanghainese dialect. Wow. Uh, and he grew up in New York. He spent 20 years in China and Hong Kong. Uh, he was previously our global COO, uh, sorry, CEO for Asia Pacific region, but now he's our uh, global CEO and president based in our global headquarters in Chicago. So, Amazing growth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in one year to yeah. grow a billion dollars, I mean, kudos to what you're doing over at Seco. Yeah, it's been um, a journey. Yeah, well, and that's in the, right in the middle of the pandemic too, right? So It is, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a testament to our investment and expansion in e-commerce, yeah. uh, e-commerce logistics, international e-commerce shipping, um, home delivery and last mile, which is why we're here yep. at this show. Uh, in fact, we exhibited at the first home delivery show in Las Vegas wow. many years ago, probably eight or nine years ago. Um, and I've been coming to this show ever since the second year when it came to Atlanta. And it was there for about five years. And then obviously we've been coming here to Philadelphia since they moved it to Philly. So nice. we love this show. Nice. Well, talk to us exact about what exactly Seco Logistics does. Like, sure. you have a lot of different services. So we walk do. us through those services because yeah. I want to give the audience a really good idea of everything that you do. I mean, obviously, being a global company or in international shipping, but yeah. you're also in last mile. So yeah. talk to us about that. We're all about connecting global supply chains to e-commerce. So as you were alluding to, yes, international, air and ocean, buyer's consolidation. We have a, a great team in China, a growing new team in Vietnam. We're expanding in countries like Bangladesh and Singapore. Uh, it's been quite a journey. We, we love what the team is doing, not only in Asia, but Europe and, and all across the Americas. So, um, you know, wherever our clients are sourcing from, we can help them bring it into their home market. Uh, whether that's Europe, Asia, or North America. But then from there, it's all about connecting to e-commerce. So that means investments in technology, um, integrations with platforms like Shopify, uh, leveraging uh, platforms like Bring, who are also a sponsor and exhibitor here, who we met at Home Delivery World. Um, and we use their technology to connect with our clients, customers, the consumers, which is incredibly important. So we can do, and we've done big and bulky last mile since the 90s, um, but more recently, we've invested in the technology to create a, a better delivery experience. So the operations has been a focus of our expansion, but more recently, we've been investing and growing uh, our technology to better enhance the delivery experience so that, you know, it used to be five years ago, yeah. um, the, the, the definition of track and trace was, was different than it is today. Today, the expectation is an Uber-like Uber. experience, yeah, right? So say. that's what we have now, and that's been exciting. So. Um, it, it's all about improving the delivery experience because we know what bad looks like. We all experience that. Um, we want to be what good and great looks like and to keep those customers coming back, to get that word of mouth going because at the end of the day, when we are connecting the global supply chain to e-commerce, 
we are an extension of the brands. Yes, so you are. we take that very seriously. And, and it's not just about some unnamed company that may call you a week after you click purchase to schedule delivery, maybe a week later. It's a disjointed process, that's bad. We want to create it seamless, integrated, on brand, and ultimately easy and seamless. So we just launched actually a new product and service at the show while I was on stage called Seco Live. It's a service we've been using in the B2B world to help with medical device deliveries and uh, integrated server rack deliveries to data centers. Anytime there was coordination involved with like field service technicians or, or other on-site engineers. And it's a great technology that leverages a smartphone and you can take video and you can do video calls and it really connects the control tower and customer service team with what's happening on the ground. Amazing. Now we've just launched the B2C version where you don't have to download an app. It's all done by a, by a link, it's all web-based. Wow. So now consumers, they can interact with our brand's customer service team, our, our installation technicians, uh, and, and really ultimately we can, we can do the 80-20 rule. Manage by exception, yeah. solve problems in real time, connecting the consumers during the delivery or immediately after delivery to the right people that can solve problems in real time, make customers happy, help to solve issues around returns, prevent returns ultimately, because maybe it's a rebate or, or, or a discount on the yeah. next order. If there's a little ding or scratch, or maybe you can't get the pedals on the exercise bike, and you just have a question, you don't want to deal 30 minutes on it with the bot. You know, all these things can be solved in real time and much quicker with our new SQL Live technology. Talk about refreshing. Yeah, see? I mean, you know, when you talk to a logistics company, thinking about your customer's customer and the customer experience and how valuable that is to them keeping a customer or yep. having a new customer. I mean, it's huge, right? And being able to partner on the technology side, I always say collaboration is the future of business. And that's what you're doing, right? You're looking at the technology that's already out there yep. and what they're doing and how they can enhance what you do for your customers as well, bringing them into an ecosystem that really lifts up your customers and puts them first. Sarah, you hit the nail on the head because you know we used to think that we could build everything on our own. Right. You know, we have a great technology that's a team. Logistics no, mentality uh, listen, from the our, 90s. our CTO Mike Powell is <laughs> here. He, he, but he's been actually spearheading this shift for us, right. which has been been built by or partner, you know? In some instances we will build, especially anything interfacing with our clients. Yeah. But but anything else, absolutely, there's an ecosystem out there. Yeah. And, and we should all leverage that ecosystem. Uh, whether it's brands, whether it's logistics companies, carriers, anyone within the ecosystem. It's so important and crucial uh, to, to partner with and buy software from yeah. best in class providers. Uh, so the technology is critically important but you don't have to do it all on your own anymore. <laughs> uh, but you do need to be able to create extensible systems so that you can connect much yeah. easier with other platforms and providers uh, because if you have friction in your processes, yeah. if you can only do EDI, for example, um, there's going to be problems. It's going to slow your ability to grow. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's all APIs today. Uh, well, and that's what supply chain is all about, yeah. is being connected. Yeah. Not only for yourself as a business, right? The SECO business, your customer's business, and then their customer's um, experience as well. And as long as everything's connected, you're communicating, you're able to give them that Uber-like experience because at the end of the day, that's what we're all used to. Where's my driver? I can see him, he's 200 meters <laughs> away. Like that's what we want to see, right? We're used yep. to it on the B2C side. Now we want to see it on the B2B side, and it sounds like you're spearheading that. Absolutely. Now, you talked about exponential growth throughout the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. What did you learn as a global leader, and obviously being the chief growth officer, because I think you only came into that position about January 2020, and so yeah, really right. busy, lots of things to do. What did you experience, what did you learn as Seco Logistics about your customers, about how to look at the future of supply chain, and about your company and your company's growth? Uh, it's a great question. Uh, we, we liked to use the analogy of a highway um, because in March of 2020, um, the, the highway kind of you know ran pretty smoothly before March. Meaning, you know, the, let's say a three-lane highway, you had the slow lane, the middle lane, and the right. fast lane, right? Yeah. And everyone's supply chains kind of followed whichever lane they were in. You know, yeah. uh, fast fashion was in the fast lane, right? 
um, automotive was in the fast lane, but maybe some other clients, they were more in the middle lane and others in the slow lane. Well, March 2020 happened and everything stopped for 30 days it seemed, but then all of a sudden it started to speed up and slow down at different times. <laughs> and, 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 and anyone that's driven on a highway knows that's a recipe for disaster. That causes traffic jams. So, uh, you know, we saw that happen throughout. I remember March of 2020, it was like a microcosm of what's happened since, meaning we would talk to, I mean, we, we had a team in China, they were on lockdown already. They were, so we knew it was coming. We didn't know obviously the extent, but we knew something was coming. There were going to be restrictions. Um, we were creating contingency plans, but we were talking to clients at the time, let's say the first week of March, that, that as if nothing was going to happen. And other clients, they were already closing down. And so everyone was experiencing the reality at different times. And so that's what's happened now over the past couple of years, different companies have lived in different realities. Yeah. And so any one company could be in a completely different position uh, from their supply chain, even if they're in a similar industry to another client. So it used to be clients in the same industry followed similar patterns. Well, that's no longer the case. Everyone is unique. Everyone is implementing new things at different times, launching new sourcing in new countries, slowing down their supply chain, speeding it up, launching new distribution centers, outsourcing, insourcing. You know, all these things are happening in real time because everyone had to change their tires on that highway yeah. while they were going 60 miles an hour. That's such a great analogy. We, I know. Well, we like to use highway analogies in transportation, <laughs> so there you go. I think that's so good. Yeah. But you're right. And now we've realized that one way of doing supply chain, and supply chain covers a vast majority of things, yeah. is not good for everybody. Yeah. And everybody has different requirements. And so I'm sure for a logistics company, you've really had to adjust and pivot and figure out what that is with your clients because not everybody has all of the answers, but you need to work together to sort of figure out you know, where you go from here and what the supply chain of the future is gonna look like so that you can better service them and they can better service their clients. Listen, when you go to a hospital and they plug you in and like you have all your vitals that are showing up, your blood pressure, your heart rate, you know, these monitors show you vitals. Well, well, for supply chains, the vitals are what we call VUCA. It's an acronym we use, VUCA. Okay. Volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Okay. And over the past two and a half years, <laughs> those vitals have all been in the red. There's been a, a, a proliferation of a lot of volatility, a lot of complexity, a lot of ambiguity and a whole lot of uncertainty. And it's been a challenge for everybody. So having agile, nimble, flexible, responsive partners that can help you pivot has been ever more critical now than, than it ever has in the past. Yeah. Um, and, and, and here's the thing though, you know, there's gonna be a new normal. So we're not gonna go back to pre-2019. You know, so, so what does that mean for clients, for shippers, for companies that wanna sell, grow, expand? especially with you know, talks of recession or slowdowns, downturns, uh, it's, it's gonna continue to be challenging for Absolutely. quite some time. So let's go back to your Seco Live. Yeah. So if I'm in the audience and I really like the sound of it, uh, what does onboarding and implementation kind of look like for that particular product? Is it pretty much right away or? It's pretty much right away. Okay. It's, it's, that's a great thing. Now, there's other integrations that can happen to be more embedded with your systems and order confirmations, embedding links, but ultimately to get started, it takes hours to set up. Nice, I love that. And who do I have to be as an ideal client for Seco Logistics? You've got, I mean, a variety of different services. Sure. So you would work with a variety of different clients. Yeah. But what do I need to look like if I'm sitting in the audience and I'm like, I really like what Brian's talking about <laughs> right now, but I want to make sure I'm the right fit. Uh, really, if you're a big and bulky shipper, if you've got furniture, exercise equipment, recreation, ping pong tables, uh, even TVs, anything that has some complexity in assembly, it could even be bed frames where a consumer might have questions immediately post delivery. Um, or there could be uh, you know, issues with how expensive the item is uh, to return it. So anything that's big and bulky, anything in the furniture space, um, uh, those are the ideal client profiles to really enhance the delivery experience because we're never gonna be as good as our clients in understanding the product, knowing the product, and being as passionate about um, how it works. And right. so we're all about, you know, we're the ones that are in the consumer's homes 
you can use our technology to connect in real time with video chat with your customers to solve Whoa. issues in real time. That is amazing. Absolutely. I love that. I love yeah. that because I've gotten a box and I've had to assemble something and something didn't come or you know the piece didn't fit into the other piece and I needed something else. Absolutely. But you're right, I would have to get on the phone or I would have to decide in that moment what I'm gonna do with that product. Now YouTube is great uh, and trust me, I've used <laughs> it myself, but sometimes it's best just to connect to an expert right yeah. then and there because you've only got that hour. I you've got that. that 30 minutes up to the delivery and you've got 30 minutes after the delivery yeah. and a lot of good things can happen then yeah. and that's your opportunity but that's also where a lot of bad things and bad experiences can happen. Yeah. So if you can solve to that hour, you can create great customer experience, yes. great word of mouth and really help with your lifetime customer value and help to grow your business. I love that. All right, so can you paint us a picture of how your client came to you with the challenge that they had? the solution that you provided, and what was the ROI and benefit to their business? Uh, well, sure, uh, I, I'll tell you. I'm sure you have so no, many, but no, we're, gonna, uh, we're no. gonna pick one or two. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's actually a great question. So, uh, th there was an example um, where we actually used SQL Live uh, in the supply chain process. Okay. Uh, and what, what happened was, uh, the containers that were coming in from Asia, um, you know, we would offload the containers, and there would be issues uh, with some of the product. And we were recording um, you know, with video like how the product was coming in, how there was damage, there was leakage in the container, or there wasn't stacked right, and it was creating problems. We were able to connect right away to the customer because oftentimes your distribution centers are far away from where your home offices are. So to be able to catch problems in real time and connect with live video feeds to our customer, they were able to identify which one of their vendors was the source of their supply chain problems. Wow. Which one was creating Huge. the most damage and product uh, yeah. malfunction. So they could actually correct it much faster with that one vendor. And I mean, that saves millions of dollars down the line yeah. because you can stop it and nip it in the bud as soon as it gets to your inbound distribution center. Instead of waiting until it gets all the way to the consumer and now you've got 20% returns whereas before you only had 5%. Yeah. That is, those are some amazing stats. I mean, if you think about efficiencies within your supply chain, being able to catch them at that particular moment so that they don't, there's no domino effect and they don't keep going. Yeah. You know, that's huge to anybody's business. Absolutely. Sure. So, what's the future for Seco? Tell us, give us a little glimpse into what we can expect. <laughs> Well, uh, e-commerce is going to continue to be a big focus for us. Okay. Currently, it's about 40% of our total business. Um, that's only going to continue to grow. Yeah. We recently announced some acquisitions. That pace of acquisitions will continue. Uh, we a great partnership with a company called Bansard, headquartered in Paris. They have a network of 17 countries that we now have a presence in. Uh, so there's going to be more of that in the future. We're very excited for that. Um, but you know, these are going to be strategic partnerships and acquisitions. Uh, we're not going to be buying to be bigger. Um, we're acquiring to be better, um, to grow our network where our clients need us, and to build our competencies in areas like e-commerce where we need to go deeper uh, and get better at, or to, to, to help catch up with our clients' growth in e-commerce and white glove and freight forwarding. Love that. So, if people want to get in touch with you, mm -hmm. where do they go? What's your website? Uh, SecoLogistics.com, S-E-K-O, logistics, all one word, dot com. You can find me on LinkedIn, on Twitter. You can find Seco on Twitter or LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, if you go to our website, um, you can actually talk with a live person. We have a live chat that we've enabled nice. on any one of our pages except the homepage uh, because there's a lot of customer service inquiries. But anywhere else, you'll find one of our great team members. A lot of them are actually here at the show. They're taking these live chats from the show. Nice. We're not as fancy as your equipment here, uh, but, we, but we get by. I love that. So Seco Logistics puts your customers first. And so you definitely want to give them a call because Seco Live, I mean, just sounds amazing. If I could talk to somebody when I had a problem with my assembly, I would want to do that. And so they're changing the face of what we are doing in logistics right now. So thank you, Brian, and thank you to the team at Seco for coming on the show today. Sarah, thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. I'm gonna go